สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am making garlic pepper fried pork, and yes, it is as delicious as it sounds, if not even more. This is a super classic, homey dish that you can get. In many street food restaurants, or lots of people make it at home. It's just super popular amongst kids as well because it's not spicy, but adults love it. It's just all around deliciousness. Um, in Thai, this dish is called mu t h a t gatiam pik Thai. So mu is pork, t a t means to deep fry, gatiam is garlic, and pik Thai is pepper. So very self-explanatory dish. All right, let's get started. For the pork, now people use different cuts for this, but I personally like to use pork butt, which is not the butt, but in fact pork shoulder. Pork shoulder is a lot more flavorful, and it also has a lot more fat for tenderness and flavor, so that's why I like it. And I just cut it into you know thin slices like this, about a quarter inch thick, not too thin because we're gonna fry this. So you want to give it enough thickness so that it doesn't dry out by the time the outside is cooked. Okay, I've seen people use tenderloin or Pork loin as well, but those will be a lot leaner. So you really have to be careful not to overcook if you want to go the leaner route. All right, so that's the pork. We'll leave that for now. Let's make the marinade. So in my mortar and pestle here, we're gonna pound up what we call sam g l e or three friends, which is the basis for many, many, many Thai dishes, and that includes white peppercorns going in, and I'm gonna pound that first. So you want it nice and fine like this, and then I'm gonna add my cilantro stems. Now in Thailand, most people would use cilantro roots. I can't find the roots here, so the stems would work just fine. Keep the leaves. We will use that for garnish later, and also some garlic. We're gonna use a lot of garlic for this recipe, by the way. So you're gonna need a whole head. You want one third of it in the marinade. The other two thirds we're gonna save to make crispy fried garlic later. So because this is a marinade, you want it nice and fine. So you want a pretty fine paste, just like that. Okay. So all that goodness goes into the pork, and then the seasoning. Really, really simple. I've got some soy sauce, some fish sauce, of course. Oops, and some sugar. So we want this to be. Predominantly salty, but you want some sweetness to cut the saltiness. It's not going to end up tasting super sweet, but that subtle sweetness is what's going to make this irresistible. Get it all mixed together. So make sure every piece is completely, completely covered, and you want to let this sit about 20 minutes, which is perfect because during this time we have to make the crispy garlic. So we're gonna first make crispy fried garlic, which is so key to this recipe. Um, and then, as a result of frying that garlic, that oil is gonna become super garlicky, and we'll use that same oil to fry the pork for extra garlickiness. So it's gonna be <laughs> garlic extravaganza all around. So I've got just a little bit of oil here, just enough to submerge the garlic at this point. And then note that I haven't turned the heat on because. You don't have to preheat the oil to fry garlic, and I find that if you do, sometimes you overheat the oil, and then you end up burning garlic, and then you have to throw the whole thing away, because you want to get this nice and golden and crispy. But if it gets too golden, it's going to get bitter. Okay, so just light golden. So you want to keep the heat low for the entire duration of this frying, and you want to keep stirring the whole time so that the heat is evenly distributed. And for our Patreon members with access to the show after the show, for this episode, I'm going to give you some deep frying tips for safety and just better frying all around. If you want to know more about becoming a Patreon member, I'll put the link in the description below. You can check that out. So one indication that the garlic is becoming crispy is that the bubbling has slowed down because the less water there is in the food, the less it is sort of evaporating, bubbling out of the food, right? So in the beginning, that's why there's lots of bubbles. Okay, I'm gonna take it out, and you want to make sure you don't leave any stray bits of garlic floating around because we're gonna use this wok to fry the pork, and that garlic will burn. If it's just hanging out there, so, and you know what I'm going to do instead is because I forgot about this, um, because there's a lot of residual oil in the garlic, I'm just going to put it on paper towel, so that it will absorb the excess oil, so the garlic is going to dry out. There we go. 
So I am actually going to deep fry this pork and I should note that a lot of people don't actually deep fry their pork. A lot of people then from this point on will just kind of stir fry it, which then doesn't make it mu taut technically because you're stir frying it, not deep frying it. But if that's what you'd rather do, it is okay. It doesn't taste quite the same, obviously, but it's an option for you. But I'm going to deep fry it. So I'm going to add now more oil to the same oil. And we want that to get to about 375. While we wait for that oil to heat up, this pork, I'm going to add a little bit of cornstarch to it. And that cornstarch will just coat the pork, gives it a better mouthfeel and also help prevent it from drying out too much while you fry. It just ends up being a, a better texture. That's it. It's just going to look kind of wet and pasty. We're not battering it, so it doesn't need to be a thick coating. In the end, you will almost not even know that that's there. It's just going to be there making a difference without you noticing. Very subtle. We're very close. I'm actually going to fry my pork in two batches because you do not want to crowd this pot. So in it goes. But you right away want to pay attention and spread out all the pieces so they don't stick together so they cook more evenly. There we go. And they'll spread out a lot more easily than you think. This takes literally 30 to 45 seconds. The pork pieces are thin. Basically, as soon as the outside looks done, you're done. And quite literally, I am taking them out now. It's nice and golden on the outside. The inside is definitely done. Ah, I'm doing this on the wrong hand. I should be having my tongs on my right hand, so this is really awkward, but that's okay. <laughs> Aha! I know that's like, what? That could not possibly be done yet. Trust me, it is. And you don't want pork well done anyway, because then they get dry. So you want it, if you can get pork medium well, that's just about perfect. Wow, I did not divide those batches very evenly. <laughs> this batch is a lot bigger. So my oil temp has dropped a bit more for this, so this is going to take a little bit longer. So this is why it's good to have a thermometer too, so you can sort of monitor your oil temperature. Okay, that's it. If the outside looks done, the inside definitely looks done. Look at that. This also reminds me of like drinking food, of Thailand's drinking food, where you would have nice cold beer and you would just munch on deep fried things. Healthier than french fries. Now, that doesn't look particularly beautiful, don't worry. Cilantro garnish saves the day every time. <laughs> all you have to do is sprinkle some greenery on it and all of a sudden, it looks fresher. Um, and of course, our garlic, our fried garlic, which you're going to want a lot of. Adam's protesting that I'm not distributing my cilantro evenly, so here, redistribute. There, are you happy? It's important. Okay. And now it looks so much better. No, it does not need a dip. It does not need a sauce. It, trust me, is so flavorful. You're not going to need anything else. I'm going to get this piece right here. You can have this with rice. It's also really good with sticky rice because sticky rice is really good with munchy food. But for the sake of tasting, I'm just going to taste it straight up for you. Ooh, garlicky. Mmm. That pork is so tender. Oh, just the perfect amount of salty and sweet. Again, we added some sugar, but it's not tasting sweet, but it is tasting very well balanced. And when you get the balance of salty and sweet right, let me tell you, my friends, that is when food becomes addictive. Mm. And that is it. I hope you give this a try. It's super easy. You can marinate the pork in advance, fry it up the next day, have it with some cold beer, you know, you'd want to serve this with maybe like a soupy dish or something to wash it all down. But you know what? 
if you just give me this with a plate of rice or some sticky rice, I'm happy just like that. The recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. And when you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I'm also on Pinterest, by the way, for those of you who are pinners. If you haven't subscribed to the show, make sure you do so you don't miss a recipe like this and click the bell icon so you always get a notification when I post a new video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.